Welcome to a lesson on 9.1, adding and subtracting rational expressions. Before we start doing that, let's, uh, because we're dealing with fractions, uh, let's talk about ex finding the uh, excluded values, right? So when you have a fraction like this, uh, what possible values are possible, uh, what are possible x values, right? But we also know that the when you have a fraction, you can't have a zero in the denominator. So when we set the denominator equal to zero, we know that x can't be one. Otherwise, the uh, there's no value associated with it because it'll be undefined. So we, if we were to simplify this going forward like this, uh, we could factor the numerator, and then we could see that the one minus x and x minus one cancels, but that become negative one, right? And then when you multiply it through, that's what you get, but you have to state. So this expression, this fraction, is equivalent to negative of x plus 1 as long as x is not 1. So we always have to be aware of the restrictions of the domain value. And we call that the excluded, excluded values. All right, so let's add and subtract a two rational uh, expression. But before we do that, let's look at some parallel case of, you know, adding just fractional numbers, all right? If you have one half plus one third, uh, we're supposed to have a common denominator. To make that happen, uh, our LCM is six. So the, on the left fraction, I multiply by three over three. On the right, two over two. And we transform one half plus one third into three over six plus two sixth. The values are equivalent except that we just express it with common denominator of 6, and then we add across the numerator, which gives you 5 6 So if you were to do that with this example, what would you need to do? Well, first of all, we need a common denominator, but the or, or LCM, least common multiple of the denominators. But in order to do that, I need to know the factors, right? So we need to factor it first. So x squared is already is in a factored form, this x squared, and the, the right-hand side is x times x plus 1. So what would you have to do to make these two identical? In the first one, we would need x plus 1. In the second one, we would need x, right? So when you multiply the denominators like this, you will know that it's x squared times x plus 1, and the right-hand side is the same thing, x squared times x plus 1, right? so that we know that we have a common denominator, so we expand out the numerators of each respective numerators with uh, the new multiplications. So when you have x squared plus x plus 2 times x plus 1, you get this expression right here, right? Uh, x cubed all the way to 2 right here, right? And then the second numerator is x squared times x gives you x cubed. So if you add all the like terms that 2, that's x squared, x squared, and it's 2x and x, and x cubed and x cubed, right? When you combine all that, we end up with 2x cubed plus 2x squared plus 3x plus 2, everything divided by x squared times x plus 1. But we talked about the uh, excluded values, right? So the denominator cannot be 0, and denominator is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0 or x is negative 1, right? So we had to write that down. So basically for that, we just set the denominator equal to zero and say, hey, we can't have that. Okay, so this part B we're gonna do in class. So uh, if you know, sort of think about it a little bit, that's great, but try to leave it alone and let's do it in class. And let's do this word problem, guys. Uh, it's kind of long, but the, the question is actually here, top. The two groups have agreed that each will contribute 2,000 for upcoming trip. There are two different groups, group A and group B, but group A has more people. If that's the case, if you're in group A, would you pay more or less? Right, because you have more people individually. If you're dividing up the $2,000 amongst more people, you pay less, right? If you let X be equal to the number of people in A, then B must be there, there must be less people, right? By six. So the number of people there is x minus 6. Now, let's think about this a little bit. Distance equal to rate times time. So the rate is when you solve for the rate, you get distance divided by time. The similar case to this is that the total dollar amount is equal to the individual rate per person 
times the quantity of people. So individually, the how much you pay is the amount of money the group pays divided by number of people. Is that making sense? Good. It's very it's analogous to distance equal to rate times time. So the difference between that is rate of the group B minus the rate of group A. The rate being the individual rate that that you you would pay as an individual, right? So that would be two thousand minus x minus six minus two thousand divided by x. Now, once you put that as an expression, it looks exactly like what we did before, right? It's a just subtracting or adding two fractions. So common denominator is to get that if the first one you multiply by x over x, the second one x minus 6 over x minus 6. Expand that out. And we end up with this. Uh, in the second one, it's like negative 2,000 times x gives you negative 2,000 x. Negative 2,000 times negative 6 gives you 12,000. So 2,000 x cancels, and we end up with this. So the difference between the two groups is 12,000 divided by x times x minus 6. That's the difference in the rate between two people. Okay. All right, guys, uh, that wraps it up. There's a second example to like word problems here, but uh, word problem that, you know, models the rational expression. But we'll do that in class, okay? All right, guys, have a good night. I'll see you in class.